Hello and welcome to Microsoft Official Course 20461C Querying Microsoft SQL Server 2014. This video is being presented by Silish Mehta and I am a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm also a Microsoft Certified uh, Regional Lead and these are just some of my certifications. I was presented with the Certificate of Appreciation uh, last year in 2014 and then I was presented with this certification this year. This was last month in 2015. Uh, these are some of my active Microsoft certifications. So welcome to this brief introduction on the course 20461C all about learning how to query SQL Server 2014. This course has been broken up into 20 modules and it's a five day class. So we roughly do four modules a day. And as you can see in the very first day, you will learn all about SQL Server 2014. Then you learn the introduction to T-SQL query language. You learn how to write a basic select statement and you learn how to query multiple tables using join statements. That will be day one. And on day two, when we come back, we'll first of all recap everything we learned on day one. That's very important to continue our knowledge and to make sure and reinforce that the students are actually learning what they came to learn. We ask a series of questions to each student to verify that they actually learned the knowledge that we imparted on day one and then continue forward. So on day two, you learn how to sort and filter data and basic syntax for both of these, then how to work with different SQL Server data types. Uh, DML or data modification language, which is including insert, delete, and uh, insert, update, delete, and select is also considered a part of that data modification language. You'll also learn all the built-in functions and how to use them uh, to query your data. Then day three, we'll come back and talk about grouping and aggregating data, and also we'll teach you subqueries. But our main focus of this module 10 is not just teaching subqueries, but to teach you how to rewrite subqueries into join statements. Why? Because SQL Server is optimized for join statements, not for subqueries. So SQL Server or T-SQL language does support subqueries because subqueries have been around uh, for a long time. And a lot of subqueries are out there that companies are using even today. Now, this may be uh, very important to know that the T-SQL or the Transact SQL query when it is executed is actually taken over by the query optimizer. So there is an engine which is part of SQL Server called Query Optimizer and this Query Optimizer is intelligent enough to rewrite a subquery as a join statement if it can be done and will execute a subquery as a join statement and thus help improve the performance of that subquery. Then when we come back on day two, I mean, sorry, day three, uh, rest of the day we'll be using table expressions and set operators. And then day four is learning all the new uh, windows ranking, offset, aggregate functions, pivoting and grouping sets, executing stored procedures, and learning how you can include programming with T-SQL. And on the last day, we typically will start with implementing error handling, transactions, how we can improve the query performance, and lastly, how to query SQL Server metadata. So these are the 20 modules that will be covered in this course 20461. Now I'm gonna give you a brief demonstration that we uh, Microsoft Certified Trainers provide in addition to the knowledge that you will get from this course. So we have a lot of real world experience having worked in the industry in various uh, different job. And I basically was part of a migration project of SQL Server. So we bring that knowledge and enhance the learning that you get when you take these courses. Here is an example of a simple select statement.
every query should begin with what we call a batch statement this batch comment includes things like why this query was written who created this query what was the creation date if this query has been modified when was it modified etc this information which is called a batch comment at the top of every query helps in the person who looks at this query understand the basis of this query as a best practice we always encourage you to start every t sql query with a use statement the use keyword is always followed by the database name in this example adventureworks 2014 and then it's followed by the batch directive go so the batch directive go basically executes the statement above the go in a single batch since we have two goes in this query it will basically break the operation into two batches and this is important because let's say you have a query which has 500 lines of code and you do not use the go directive batch directive what will happen it will execute all 500 lines of code in one batch but troubleshooting wise let's say there's a problem and the query fails now you will have to go to 500 lines of code to figure out where the problem is instead of that if you would have broken down this query into let's say 50 batches and then what will happen is in the messages you will see how many batches were run and what was the output you got and that will help you focus your attention on that part of your query where the problem is and this improves what we call error handling so as a best practice we recommend that you break your query into batches thus giving you better performance and also making it easy for you to troubleshoot a query that fails to work in this example we are going to use the employee table in the human resource schema and what is the schema what is the table we're going to cover all of that we are going to select the top five rows and this keyword top is actually uh, patented to microsoft so you can only use it in the microsoft realm you can't use it outside so here we want to select the top five rows but we only want to return these three columns business entity id login id and job title if you don't know how many columns there are in this table then you can just use the wildcard the multiplication sign and this will return all the columns in that table if you hover your mouse before the uh, wildcard IntelliSense which is built into SQL Server Management Studio actually shows you all the columns that are in that particular table and then you can pick and choose what you want or all of them so let's say if you execute this now it returns all the columns having done that now we know what the columns are and you can then reduce your output to only those columns that you are interested in so for example i only want business entity id and i only want login id i want the job title and intellisense is actually showing me all these column names so i don't have to type the whole column name let's see if there's anything else we want yeah let's say we want the vacation hours and we also want the sick leave sick leave hours so we have selected the business entity id login id job title vacation hours sick leave hour so these are the only columns we want and that's all that we will get so this is a brief demonstration of how we microsoft certified trainers will demonstrate to you how to use the product how to use the technology and also add real world examples and real, real world knowledge of how to use this product to improve the performance and to improve the bottom line for your companies uh, this is Silesh Mehta signing off I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm going to record uh, similar videos for all the other Microsoft official courses that I teach that I'm certified to teach um, 
Thank you and have a great day.